Next on PIJN News, Dr. Chaps reports on these important issues. There are several compassionate talking points about the pro-life issue, which makes us want to care for children as Christians. Today I interview Herbie Newell, who is president of Lifeline Christian Children's Services. Former Navy Chaplain Gordon James Klingenschmidt took a stand to defend religious freedom by daring to pray publicly in Jesus' name. Now he helps you by reporting the news, discerning the spirits, and praying the scriptures. Would you pray with us? Here's Dr. Chaps. God bless you in Jesus' name. My name is Chaplain Gordon James Klingenschmidt, Dr. Chaps, and you're watching PIJN News. On this show, we like to do three things. We report the news, we discern the spirits, and we pray the scriptures in Jesus' name. On today's show, we have a new guest who leads a pro-life ministry live from Birmingham, Alabama. I wanna welcome via Skype, Herbie Newell. Herbie, welcome to the program. You are president of Lifeline Children's Services and you have more than just a pro-life message, you have a pro-adoption message to share with us today. That's right, and I appreciate you having me on, Dr. Chaps. It's a pleasure to join you and your viewing audience and to talk about what I believe is a very important topic, the topic of life. That's the foundation of who we are is life. And that's why abortion and pro-life movement is so central to who we are as people. Well, of course, we believe in the right to life of unborn or preborn children. We believe life begins at conception and we are fighting against the abortion holocaust and the deception that comes with that. But one of the favorite lies of the left is that Christians don't care about children after they're born, when in fact, I think at the opposite is true. I was adopted when I was three years old by a Christian family, and there are more Christians in line to adopt children. Every child is a wanted child because Jesus loves the little children. Amen, I, I agree with you. And, and certainly, you know, I'm in Birmingham, Alabama, and I had the opportunity to be a part of Alabama's adoption or abortion ban that we passed uh, about this time last year. And right after we passed the bill, Kamala Harris out in California, she actually said that exact same talking point. She said, these people down in Alabama, they've, they've put this abortion bill together that is so restrictive on a woman, but once she has this baby, they're not gonna do anything. And the truth of the matter is the church has always been there for millennial caring on and, and for vulnerable children, caring for women. Uh, and the ministry that I serve started in 1981 as a response to care for women in the midst of crisis pregnancies, to care for life inside the womb. I've seen thousands of families line up to adopt children. And so it's the church's call, but it's also been the church that has been there uh, at the time of, of humanity's greatest needs. Well, I read a statistic uh, probably 20, maybe 30 years ago when I was first beginning in pro-life activism. And it went something like this. Uh, for every 10 babies aborted, only uh, one is, is because of the illness of the mother. Nine of them are just out of inconvenience. The child is inconvenient to the mother who's, who's going to have the abortion. But for every one baby who's adopted in America, there are 10 parents on a waiting list, waiting and hoping to adopt. A lot of par parents can't have children, and, and thankfully I was adopted. I really uh, support what you're doing. What does Lifeline Children's Ministry do in this area? Yeah, so one of the first things we do is we care for the woman that's going through this unplanned, potentially crisis pregnancy. We love on her with the hope of the gospel of Christ Jesus. We, we pray over her. Uh, we share the gospel with her, uh, but we also help start to take practical steps in her life. So does she have the support that she needs to get a job, to provide for her child? And if she doesn't, and the adoption is something that she is considering, then we have a plethora of families that are ready, willing, that have been screened, uh, that believe in the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ, that wanna wrap around this child and, and to be a mom and a dad. But the neat and the awesome and just spellbounding thing about these families is most of our families not only care to be parents and, and want to love a child, but they also are extremely open to loving on a mom. And, and it's these adopted families that are praying for this birth mother, that 
that are are coming alongside of her to help her, uh, you know, fix uh, to make her her goals and her dreams and to to live out the the life that she wants. But more importantly, I love when we get to see birth mothers and adoptive families come together and adoptive families show uh, the gospel of Christ Jesus to pray over this this birth mother and to love her with the compassion of Christ. You have a book there, I want you to hold it up. I think the title is Image Bearers. And what is the subtitle? How do we uh, get a copy of this? Yeah, so the book is Image Bearers and the subtitle is Shifting from Pro-Life to Pro-Birth. And and ultimately, the the genesis of this book was, I believe, Lord willing, Dr. Chaps. And uh, I think we see that we could see Roe versus Wade overturned uh, in our lifetimes. Uh, certainly, we see a, a Supreme Court that is is very sympathetic towards overturning Roe v. Wade. But I also think we see uh, as well that states are understanding that that it's in limbo. You see states like New York that are going with oversweeping abortion bills that, that absolutely have no limits to abortion. And then you see states like Alabama, Louisiana, and Georgia, and Tennessee, and others who are passing heartbeat bills or abortion bans. We understand that truly in our lifetime, this could become a state level. And when it does, it's going to matter more deeply. What are we doing on our on our Main Street USA? What are we doing in our neighborhoods? What are we doing in our communities to care for the woman that's vulnerable, to reach out to life that has special needs, to, to care for all life? So our aim and our goal certainly is to see the atrocities and, and the genocide of abortion overturned in our lifetime. But once that's done, there is still a pro-life ministry that needs to be done. We, we really have just only begun to, to win the battle for life when abortion is overturned. It's not the beginning and end of the battle. It's just the very beginning. It's the warm-up act. And so as believers, we've got to transition to say, once, Lord willing, abortion is overturned on a federal level, how will we live that out in our neighborhoods, in our churches, in our streets? uh, And how will we love all life and the dignity of all life? I'm with you on that. Let's take a short break. When we come back, we'll ask Herbie Newell about his book, Image Bearers, after this. This is PIJN News, defending your religious freedom. Dr. Chaps will be right back. How can you discern the thoughts in your own mind from the thoughts that come to you from the Holy Spirit or from angels or from invisible demons? We've created a 17 part video Bible study on a four disc DVD set. This important Bible study series goes through Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. How did Jesus discern the spirits? How did the Apostle Paul discern the spirits? What does the Old Testament say about demons and the Holy Spirit and angels? We're offering a discount today. While supplies last, it used to be $99. Now it's just a suggested donation of $50. You get the entire four disc set and you learn how to discern the Holy Spirit, angels, and demons. Every mention in the Bible, Call us at 866-Obey-God. Again, that's 866-O-B-E-Y-G-O-D. Or visit our website or write to the address on your screen. You can learn to discern the spirits. Do you ever pray and sometimes you feel like your prayers are hitting the ceiling and they don't get to God or maybe you don't get the result that you hoped for? I'm Dr. Chaps and I wanna make available to you a new resource, a four part video Bible teaching series on how to pray effective prayers. Did you know God has given us instructions in the Bible? For example, in 1 Timothy 2, there are four different Greek words for four different kinds of prayers, supplication, petition, intercession, and thanksgiving. If you don't understand the way God teaches us to pray, then we cannot expect the result for which we hope. I'm asking you to get this important Bible video teaching series on DVD for a suggested donation of only $30. Call us right now at 866-Obey-God. Again, that's 866-O-B-E-Y-G-O-D. Or visit our website, PrayInJesusName.org and get this important video resource for your family. Defending your religious freedom, here is Dr. Chaps. Welcome back, I'm Dr. Chaps, joined again by President Herbie Newell of Lifeline Children's Services, Birmingham, Alabama. Herbie, the title of your book is Image Bearers. Uh, and are you changing from the language now, from pro-life to pro-birth, and what is the difference between the two? That's the subtitle of your book. Yeah, so I, I think unfortunately, there are a lot of times that we believe that our aim 
in a pro-life ministry is truly just to defend life in the womb. And certainly that's something that we do. That's something that we must be passionate about. It should inform the way we act, inform the way we vote, inform the way that we lobby our, our representatives and our senators and our government to overturn abortion and to make abortion illegal. You know, in our country, we believe in life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. And the very basis of that is life. And so if we are not as a country defending life, then we are upside down in topsy turvy. However, we've got to realize that through the word of God, this life ethic is so much bigger than just seeing a life born. It's standing up for the genocide that we see, the ethnic cleansings that we see around the world. It's it's caring for human trafficking victims. It's it's truly standing up and believing that we as God's children are looking forward to God's kingdom, which will be multi-ethnic. We see in Revelation chapter 7 that, that the palm branches, that there are every tribe and every tongue with palm branches praising the Lord at the end of the days when, when God's kingdom is ushered in. And so as God's people, we must grieve with other cultures and and ethnic ethnicities and, and other races when, when d- injustice is done towards them. It means that we stand up for what it means to, to be a man and to be a woman. We, we, we cannot be silent on this LGBTQ revolution and say that we're pro-life. It also means that we stand up and we tell men to stop wasting their lives with pornography and, and wasting their lives in ways that are gaming and staying away from their families. It means that we're pro-family and we're encouraging uh, men and women in family family, to love their families. It means that we're pro-marriage. There's so many things that it means that we need to be advocating for passionately that ultimately back up our pro-life, pro-birth ethic when we are fully and wholly pro-life. So in the book of Genesis, uh, the author, maybe Moses, is is quoting uh, the Lord who says that God made Adam and Eve in the image of God, he created them male and female. So. Do you see the image of God in the face of a child or even an unborn child? How can other people uh, not see the image of God? And, and what does the devil say about that? Yeah, so the the devil is constantly trying to war against God's image bearers. And you see, you know, shortly after that in Genesis chapter three, the fall of man. And the first and foremost thing that the devil is trying to do is to uh, is to try to absolutely destroy the vertical relationship between God and man. And the question that he asked, the deceiving question to Eve is, did God really say to doubt the goodness of God, to doubt the plans of God, but also the attack secondly was on the horizontal relationship between man and woman. And, and to get enmity between man and woman. You know, man is standing there. Man is the one with whom the command had been given. And he was, that command was given before Eve was ever made. And so there you have man and woman standing. Man is silent. Man is apathetic towards the temptation of woman. And we see the fall of man. And ever since that, Satan has tried to twist. He's tried to deceive. And he's tried to make us believe that life is not sacred, that life is expendable. The very next thing that you see through the pages of scripture is you see Cain and Abel. And you see the blood being spilled out in death and murder over over, over pride towards a, a, a sacrifice, over pride towards worship towards God. So bloodshed begins to enter in. Satan is bent against man. Why? Because man bears the image of God. And unfortunately today, we, we have things so backwards. You know, one of the things that I pointed out in the book is you can go all throughout Europe and you can go into museums and in Italy and, and the Louvre in France, and you can see pieces of artwork that are behind glass, that have guards before them and are guarded and they're uncompleted masterpieces, things that maybe the artist never finished or, or he, he stopped working on it. And we call those things masterpieces. Well, we have the master creator and author of the universe that as Psalms 139 is saying, is knitting together a baby in the womb. And yet we have the audacity to look at that life and say, if that life is incomplete, if that life has a syndrome, if that life is unwanted, then that life is not valuable. And that is upside down and backwards. And that is Satan's attack towards humanity. Is there an absence of Christian manhood in the family today? And is there an orphan crisis where fathers abandon their children? Yes, and it's it's here in our country, and it's certainly, I see it around the world. Uh, this idea that a father, even a father who is present, 
that his greatest ideal is to provide a better life for his children. It's not just to provide for their daily needs or their daily sustenance, it's to provide a, a better life. And so you see even white collar dads who have left the rearing of their family to moms or, or, or maybe even to a public school or to a private school, they're not investing in their families. And, and we see that God says through his word in Deuteronomy chapter six, that fathers right, are to teach their children the word. And, and as they rise and as they go out of the frontlets of their forehead and over the doorpost of their home, as fathers, as Christian manhood, we are to be teaching our children how they should live and teaching our children of where they should go. And we live right now in a time in our own country where almost 50% of the live births are birthed to single women or to unmarried women. We have men not standing up for the responsibility to be a dad, to love on these children. It is not effeminate to care for your children. It's not effeminate to, to, to care for, to love on, and to nurture your children, especially when you're nurturing them in the way that they should go, teaching them the things that they need. Our daughters need a daddy that will look at them and tell them they're beautiful inside and out, even when the world tells them they don't measure up. Our, our boys need daddies to show what manhood really looks like what being a man is truly all about, that it's that it's not abusing women, it's not manipulating women, it's not looking at women for what you can get physically, but it is loving and leading these precious image bears in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen to that. Uh, one more question before the break, uh, and that is about racial reconciliation and racial re relations. Is there a pro-life distinction and is the abortion industry targeting unfairly the African-American community? Well, and I quote this in the book that Margaret Sanger was completely racist and there are comments and quotes that she has made that uh, Planned Parenthood has tried to whitewash off the annals of history. But unfortunately for Planned Parenthood, they're there, they're plain, they're written, uh, they've been documented. Uh, where, where even with the birth of Planned Parenthood, Margaret Sanger said she wanted to expel the lesser race and the lesser culture, that being of African-Americans. You know, right now, the number one killer uh, from the last survey that we saw in 2017, the number one killer of African-Americans in the United States of America of heart disease, natural causes, or anything else was abortion. More African-Americans were aborted in 2017 than died of any other cause. And that's, that's cumulative any other thing. So heart disease as well as natural disaster, natural death, as well as cancer all together lumped together, they cannot even compare to the number of babies that were aborted. African-American babies that were aborted in our own country. And that is a genocide against race. But even outside of abortion, we as God's chosen and holy people, we must look at our brothers and sisters, red, yellow, black, and white. And we must show them all the dignity and the worth of Christ. We are all equal at the cross. And unfortunately, too, for too long in our history, the church stood idly by and silent, especially as our African-American brothers and sisters were, were absolutely treated unjustly and we were silent. And so maybe we didn't uh, go and participate, although some did, but our apathy was participation enough. Let's take a short break. When we come back, we'll ask about the the millennial generation. Are they becoming more pro-life than even the older generations after this? Giving you a megaphone in Washington, D.C. Dr. Chaps will be right back. Take action today. Dr. Chaps needs you to sign an important online petition. Today, I wanna to invite you to sign a critical petition to defend innocent babies and to end abortion in America. On this show, we like to pray and petition God, but we also need you to take action today by petitioning Congress to stop the taxpayer-funded child killing, especially by defunding Planned Parenthood, America's number one abortion provider. Why are your taxes paying to murder innocent children in the womb? Well, if Congress would simply define personhood as life beginning at conception, we can reverse Roe versus Wade. Please join me today by signing this important petition to Congress. Visit PrayInJesusName.org. Again, that's PrayInJesusName.org and sign your petition today. Sign today's petition right now. Again, visit PrayInJesusName.org to sign our petition right now. I'm Dr. Chaps. You know, some people are worried that we're losing our country, but they ask, how can we take a stand? We have produced now these two effective resources for you. 
a DVD video series, and a book. Yours for a suggested donation of just $50, and we will offer you four videos on this disc to teach you how to become an effective Christian activist. For example, how did I send five million petitions to Congress? How did we organize and change bad laws or policies in 13 states? How did I run and win a seat in the Colorado legislature? We will also offer you this 30-day prayer manual, How to Liberate the World in 30 Days. They're both yours for a suggested donation of just $50. Visit our website, PrayInJesusName.org, or write to the address on your screen, or better yet, pick up the phone and call us at 866-O-B-E-Y-G-O-D. You can learn the easy steps to take back your country. Call us today. Stay tuned for the end of our show to learn how to partner with this ministry. Here's Dr. Chaps. Welcome back, I'm Dr. Chaps, joined again by Herbie Newell, who is president of Lifeline Children's Services from Birmingham, Alabama. Herbie, you've written this book, Image Bearers, and hold it up and read the subtitle again. Yeah, it's uh, shifting from pro-life, to, or from pro-birth to pro-life which is this whole idea that we must embrace a whole life ethic. And in Psalm 139, that our God knitted us together in the womb. He created us in his image, Genesis 127. And so we can't just advocate against abortion, but we must love all image bears with the worth and the dignity of Christ Jesus. And I'm assuming that's sold on your website, lifelinechild.org, and also wherever books are sold, maybe Amazon, et cetera. Uh, so- Yeah, absolutely. I, I wanna ask about the next generation. In, in January, we saw the largest pro-life march on Washington, D.C. than we've ever seen, maybe a quarter million young people, and President Trump was there uh, giving a speech and leading the parade, so to speak, but is the next generation more pro-life than my generation or the baby boomers? Yeah, certainly. I think that uh, the data is showing that more and more millennials are beginning to understand that life does begin in the mother's womb and begins at conception. And a lot of that is because of the advance of medical technology and the advance of ultrasounds and also the internet. Uh, they can't deny the images that they're seeing from the womb. And you know, when when I was uh, born in the 70s, you know, it was uh, it was optional to have an ultrasound, and really was only optional if you thought there was a, a risk to the pregnancy. And even that technology even though it was available, it was very grainy. It was very hard to understand what you were looking at. But now we have 3D and 4D ultrasounds. We have uh, all of these uh, different ways that we can look into and gaze into the womb and see what God is making and forming and creating. And so the millennials have access. They can go to YouTube or Vimeo or on the internet and they can see a live 3D ultrasound uh, some of the very first stages of life. And, and they understand as science is catching up to the Lord, that science is showing us we cannot deny that this is a life inside of the mother's womb. And so no longer can we hide behind this blob of tissue or this idea that it's just a fetus. It is a baby. It is a living life that's inside the womb. I think, Dr. Chaps, the thing that we need to start praying for these millennials is this. The, the scary thing is many millennials don't believe in absolute truth. So while they may believe for themselves that this is life in the womb, they're much less likely to advocate to their peers or advocate publicly that this is the position that everyone needs to have. And we need to be praying or and or mentoring and counseling and discipling these younger generations to say there is an absolute truth. And just because you believe, if you believe in absolute truth and you are staking your life on absolute truth, then you must preach and love that absolute truth to others. Well, just going down American timeline history here, the greatest generation were those who fought in World War II. The baby booner generation were the children of World War II veterans because they had a lot of kids when they came home from the war. Generation X is my generation, the one who followed the baby booners. And then Generation Y, or kind of the millennials, they came of age around the year 2000. So they might have been 18 or 20 in the year, two, now we're in 2020. So the kids that are coming of age now, we're gonna call Generation Z. And I wonder, are they in danger of sexual exploitation? One of the, one of the chapters in your book has to do with protecting the younger kids, the next the next group of kids from pornography, from uh, sexual exploitation, from the LGBT agenda. What do you suggest to parents? First and foremost, we must understand that the things that, and, and I, I'm a generation X as well, you know, the things that when we were younger, 
uh, you know, we had to sneak around to get, uh, we had maybe a, a classmate that brought something uh, from a father's stash of magazines and, and boys were, were gathering behind the locker room or the gym class to try to find. Uh, it, it, these items are not in, in, any longer things that people have to seek out. They're seeking after our children. Uh, they're placing advertisements on the place that we get news. They're they're placing advertisements on the place that that we buy our goods. As as much more of our life goes online, and we start to do commerce online, we start to even be social online. We have to realize that evil and darkness is seeking after the hearts of our children. And so, in the same way that we would, as Christian parents, right, want to know who our kids are hanging around, and we want to get to know their friends, and we want to invest in the relationships that they're doing, we have to take an online presence with them as well. We need to be different and say, you know what, just because you're 11 years old doesn't mean that you need a smartphone. Just because you're 13 years old doesn't mean you need unfiltered access to the internet. We need to be online with our children. We need to sit with our children. We need to teach them how to have responsibility. We need to teach them how to know when they're wandering into trouble because predators are lurking. They're looking for the eyes first. The eyes then will steal the heart and the heart will steal the mind. And before we know it, our kids have been absolutely lured into this sexual perverse generation. And yes, there are people on the other end that would love nothing more than to trap our daughters and to trap our sons into a life first and foremost of consumerism where they're buying their product, but then second of all, where they're participating in this lifestyle. And there is a war. And again, it's not something that's new. It's not not something that is new under the sun. There's nothing new under the sun. We have an adversary. He's just using different tools and different methods in order to capture the minds and the hearts and to war Amen. with the very image of God. All right, we're out of time, but I wanna pray quickly. Father in heaven, we ask your blessing now. Help parents protect their children, help the next generation not just be born, but flourish in Jesus' name as we become a pro-life church. God bless your audience in Jesus' name. Amen, our guest has been Herbie Newell, his website, lifelinechild.org. Our website is PrayInJesusName.org. Again, PrayInJesusName.org. Please donate when you visit or call us at 866-Obey-God. We'll see you next time. I'm Dr. Chaps, I have two exciting announcements. For those of you who found us maybe one day a week, did you know we're on five days a week with in-depth analysis and Christian news reporting, and we pray the news. Where else are you gonna see that? Here's the exciting news. We're now on Apple TV. We're on five days a week on this exciting new streaming platform, Apple TV. Maybe you've already found us on Roku or Amazon Fire, but Apple TV, look for PIJN News in the spirituality category. And here's my other breaking news. Did you know we're also on podcast? Well, what's a podcast? Well, you can listen to us five days a week on audio, maybe when you're working out at the gym or driving in your car, you can watch the video on your smartphone, visit iTunes and look for PIJN News. We're also on 10 on-demand platforms, visit PrayInJesusName.org to find them all. And did I mention it's absolutely free? Other people charge a fee, but ours is free. Subscribe today to PIJN News. Dr. Chaps needs your financial support to stay on the air. Would you please send your best donation today? Please visit PrayInJesusName.org to donate online. Or you can mail a check to Pray In Jesus Name Ministries, Post Office Box 77077, Colorado Springs, Colorado 80970. You can also call us toll free right now at 866-Obey-God. That's 866-O-B-E-Y-G-O-D. Please sign up for our free emails at PrayInJesusName.org. Again, that's PrayInJesusName.org.